Hi, my name is Fox, and this is a tutorial course for Sonic Academy covering FabFilter Volcano 2. Uh, for FabFilter Volcano 2 is a very, very versatile multi filter with multi mode effects plugin. Uh, what I mean when I say effects plugin is uh, I've just dragged it and dropped it onto this audio file. This is a pre master of a track I've been working on. So I've just dragged it, dropped it on. You can see it comes after the EQ, the same as you would use a compressor or an EQ or any sort of insert effect. So everything that goes, all the audio coming from the audio channel or MIDI channel that's on is going to pass into the fab filter and then come out the other end. Uh, one thing I'll do quickly before we go into great detail about what this synth is, uh, we're going to have a quick look over this bottom panel here, which is like you saw a global section. Uh, and then in this part also we're going to be going over this top section, which is the, the main filter part and the controls that you have for each filter. Quickly, I will say in this bottom right hand corner, there's a little arrow here. As you can see, the GUI for this is generally quite small. If you click on that and then click in wide mode, it makes it a lot bigger, makes it a lot easier to view and see what's going on. So, uh, this bottom panel, uh, first things first, on the left hand side, there's a MIDI learn button. If you do have a MIDI controller, you can click this MIDI learn button. It's the same as any MIDI mapping, same as in Ableton. Click the MIDI learn, click on the knob you want to learn, you want it to modulate, and then twizzle your encoder or move your mod wheel and then it will automatically assign the MIDI CC to that knob really straightforward this auto mute self OSC button uh, this is real straightforward I always have this checked on what this is if you have a real high resonant peak sometimes when the audio stops it can sort of ring out and carry on the audio can sort of carry on uh, oscillating if you like like some old analog synths used to do you used to be able to sort of play the filter uh, without any signal going into it. Um, highly unwanted, it's not something you're generally going to want in your mix or <laughs> it's very unusual that you would, so if you check that it does away with that. It cuts the audio off sharp when the audio stops coming out the other end. So nice and straightforward. This is the output where you can choose what you're listening to when it's on output. Anything that goes into the filter you hear coming out the other end. Uh, we've got a low pass filter on this, I'll just play this quickly. You can hear the signal is being affected by the filter. If we set it to input, it's like bypassing the filter. Whatever we do is having no effect. This sidechain mode, um, I haven't loaded the sidechain version of Fab Filter 2, but you can set sidechain inputs to trigger different things like the envelope follower and stuff like that inside Fab Filter. This requires some door specific routing, so we're not going to be going over that in this course for now. So yeah, the main two options are output or input. For this course, we're just going to keep it on output so you can hear everything that I'm doing. You then have a dedicated input volume knob so you can control the amount of volume input in dBs going into the filter. That's this middle button here. You then have control over the pan so you can pan the signal going in to the right, to the left. You then have exactly the same controls coming out. Um, one time quickly, if you want to reset any control, just control click it. The outer ring was the pan, the middle one was the volume. If you control or command click, resets it to its default setting. You then got the same for the output, so this attenuates the signal coming out of the filter and also the pan again. So you could have it panned one way going in, pan slightly left going in, and have it pan slightly right coming out. Strange give you a slight stereo feel I would imagine you then have an overall general mix knob this is like a dry wet control for the filter very very handy very useful we'll be showing you how you can use this to balance your sounds out later on in uh, further lessons so that's the bottom panel done we'll quickly have a look at the top panel again before we get going you have undo and redo functions if I move this cut off and the peak around uh, this left arrow is an undo the right arrow is a redo nice and straightforward this A and B you have two separate filters inside this, and uh, two separate setups inside this. In effect, um, this is a way of like having two different settings, like two different. You could choose two different presets. Like let's choose one from the beats section for A, one from the distortion section, and then. You can A B between the two, mainly if you're doing fine adjustments to A B, see what they sound like with the different audio going through. Again, for now, we're just going to keep it on A. Uh, 
you've already just seen me use this button this is the presets button um, I'll show you a couple of these some of these are really cool bet in the best of section this alien communication this is sort of picking out some Rowley sort of harmonics and then sweeping through them Another real cool one in the distortion section is this electricity. This is very severe. This is going to probably be uncomfortable to listen to, but it gives you a glimpse of what you can really do with this. Real heavily distorted. It's boosting signals. Um, the, the boost on these peaks is really high. Uh, you can really get it to break up and get some real nasty distortion settings. Um, the clean setting, this is like your default setting where everything's just passing through one filter wide open. This is what we're going to start with and now I'm going to talk about the, the main features, features of all these filters. So one filter is highlighted for now. You can click it on and off by t turning this button on. When it's dull, it's not on. When it is, it's uh, sort of a bit brighter. Uh, this middle knob is the frequency, the frequency of the cutoff. I'm sure you're all aware of how a basic filter works. Uh, you then have a pan for each individual filter. This is unique to Fab Filter. You can pan the signal coming out of each filter, respectively. Very, very neat when you've got multiple filters to modulate these different ways. You then have the peak. This boots the, boosts the signal at the cutoff point, or resonance, most people call it. Once you've once you've chose your frequency, you pan in your peak. You then have a choice of these these lot of filter characteristics. Uh, that they're, they're different sort of models of, of filters, if you like. That the names are self-explanatory. The gentle one is what I use most commonly. It's the less harsh and less abrupt. It doesn't add sort of any extra harmonics or distortion unless you boost it too high. If you start choosing some of these metally ones. <laughs> Adds a lot of distortion and a lot of more character to the sound, um, especially with high resonance settings. So you can choose the character between any one of these and pick which one you like. You then have choose over, cho choice over the type of filter. You have a low pass, a high pass, and a band pass. You then have choice over slope between 12, 24, and 48 dB respectively. Um, you can change the filter type by con control clicking or command clicking on the number. Cycles from a little shortcut you can get used to using. The only other thing that we have then on the individual filter section is the delay function. This again is very unique to FabFilter. I've never seen this on any other filter plugin. This delays the audio signal coming out of the filter. Um, doesn't really make much difference when you've just got one filter in play but as I'll show you in a minute when you bring more filters in and you offset these delays you can start to get some sort of chorusing, widening, pitch bend effect. If you modulate it fast you can start to get some scratchy sort of signs. It's very very cool to modulate this. A lot of the presets uh, I've learned from looking through them make use of this delay uh, filter delay when multiple filters are open to really sort of spread the sound out and give it some stereo feel to make it sound a lot thicker. Uh, this little cross turns the filters on and off as well. So all the basic controls for one filter. The good thing about Volcano is that you have a choice of up to four more filters. To turn them on you just see you click that little plus knob, plus, uh, knob that I've done that's now introduced a second filter. Click it again you have three Click it again, you have four. All of the controls are identical. Whichever one you're clicked on, these set of controls then uh, correlate to that filter. Or you can click on the, the number above the peak and then it automatically changes to that filter. So you could have four different filters, all on totally different shapes, all with totally different delay settings. You get, you're starting to get the general gist of the power of this thing. Then you have the routing option. Um, you can link these peaks together actually. I'll show you that quick. I'll change the routing so that the, the sound's coming out of all of them. 
you can link these peaks together and then move them around together. You see this little chain link button across the top of number one? If you hover over number two, then another one appears, or number three, or number four, or vice versa. Vice versa. If you click on that, it then links those two peaks together, so you can move them move them around together. Uh, the peak, the cutoff, and the peaks are linked together, so they will always move and increase the way you move your, move your mouse. If we link all four together, you can start to get some crazy, some crazy things going on. What I did there is Control Alt Click. If we if we just hold it on the link, you can move them all together, as you can see. That's really useful if you wanted to record some automation into your door and then be able to fiddle around with it afterwards. If you control alt and then click on one of the cutoff points, if we choose one, this then starts an axis. It uses the link part point as an axis, so you can sort of swing them all around together. Let's see what that sounds like. As you can see, you can start to get some crazy modulation, really, really sort of mangle some sounds up and get some interest, interesting features going on. So yeah, what it, it just goes on and on and on. It's so powerful. Four filters, all with individual filter settings and slopes, different delays, peaks, frequencies, and panning. Um, you then have this box here with the routing options. As you can see, I changed it from serial where one flows into two, into three, into four, so that they are all in parallel. So you've got the same amount of single going into each filter and then coming out at the end. If we was to have this in serial mode, you want, you're not, you're not going to get the same effect. Everything's just coming out of four at the minute, which is this little high pass filter. So yeah, generally, you're going to have them in this mode if you want to make use of all four filters. But there are some creative routing options. It's very easy to understand what's going on. Splitting the signal flow, passing them between each other in different various routing options. If we set this back to clean mode again, um, you can see the routing options correlate to how many filters you've got turned on. So at the minute, there's just one there. If I turn another filter on, it gives you the routing options for two. If I turn three on, the routing options for three, and so on, all the way up to four different filters. Um, as well as them all being linked together in stereo mode, you have the choice of switching them between left and right mode. This shows you at the bottom here which ones are what. So 1 and 2 in the left channel here, 3 and 4 are going through the right channel. Uh, again, different routing options. It's always 1 and 2 in the left and always 3 and 4 in the right, but you can change whether they're in series or parallel mode. And uh, many other different ways of routing them together. The last one is mid-side. This one's a little bit more complicated to get your head around. Um, one and two will always be controlling the mid part of the sound or the mono and then three and four we're taking care of the stereo field everything that's wide of center again multiple different routing options uh, to, to suit any situation that you could ever want to come across really so you can, you can see it's really easy to build some real complex structures with these filters and then just sort of get to grips with uh, linking them together and just playing around manually uh, whether it's assigning MIDI controllers to the knobs or just linking them together and control alt clicking and doing some crazy sort of modulation uh, that's before we go to the modulation section which we're going to be going over in the next part so yeah hope you enjoyed this first part stay tuned uh, we'll be covering all the different modulation sources in the next one okay thanks for watching cheers <laughs>